talking to some of the people in my network and it's just like they're thinking way too small mm-hmm. so finally being able to connect with someone who's just as crazy if not crazier than i am right it's like wow i'm not crazy this is such a relief you're, you're not crazy and and d- d- listen you're you're going to be the biggest thinker in your circle Javon, hey man, nice to meet you. Hey, good morning. Um, so I was just curious, I had a couple questions right out the gate, um, just to even start, just to understand a little bit more about you. I saw your whole interview, I saw a little bit about um, the YouTube videos that you had. You seem like a happy guy, man. Like uh-huh. the accounts that have been 10, 15 years in, into their accountancy, they don't smile like you do. So I think we're off to a good start. So, so I always tell my kids work is work, work is not fun. Work is work, work is not play. Right. Right, like you don't go to work to have fun and play, but but when you're aligned with your purpose and with your values, and when you're doing the things that you know that you're really good at, then then the satisfaction I get is from being able to help people, from being able to overcome challenges, from um, from the struggle. That's that's actually what makes me happy. Uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm kind of a, a a dualistic thinker. You know, I I honestly don't think that content and happy people do huge things. If you are content and you are happy, if you are satisfied, if you're comfortable, then what is the thing that is motivating you? What is the thing that's stirring things up within you? And so I spend most of my time disappointed. Um, I feel, uh, I I, I have anxiety. I have, um, I have, uh, I have super high standards that I and a lot of people fall short of. Um, uh, I'm impatient and things aren't fast enough. And so I can have a ton of fun having a conversation with you and with clients and I love playing the game and I love, like, like, like I, I love coming into work right now especially. It's a bunch of years where I didn't, but at this point with the changes we're making, with what we're doing, I love coming into work. I cannot wait to jump on things. But, um, you know, honestly, happiness is a byproduct of setting up your life properly. You know, I've been married for a very long time. My spouse cannot make me happy. Um, I'm, I'm a Christian. The Bible does not promise happiness to anyone. <laughs> it's happiness is a byproduct of, of you foundationally setting up your life, your purpose, your path, your career, the challenges, serving. Uh, the, you know, me honoring my wife will lead to happiness as opposed to me pursuing happiness. Now, what, what was it about your company? What is it about you within right now that's making you happy? You said there was a time when you weren't as happy, but something had changed. One of the changes that you did to even make that happen, and mm-hmm. what were some of the uh, results that happened as because of that change? Yeah, so let me, I mean, I'm, I'm, 12, I'm 12 years in, you know, we have, uh, we have pretty consistent business. So it, it probably makes sense for me to go back a little bit earlier, you know, you're, you're earlier in your career. So the, the biggest um, shifts and changes, the, the first thing was, was um, I spent many, many years making the least amount of money in my company, um, barely scraping to get by, uh, never considering the company's money my money. I, I think realtors fall into this problem a lot. Realtors underspend on their business and their marketing and their growth because they think of every commission dollar that comes in as their dollar. I never thought that way, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're an accountant background. Like I'm an incorporated company. The company's money is the company's money. And, um, and I'm paid a salary, which was way under market. And so if I had to, you know, for the first year I made 18 grand, even though the company generated 100 grand in revenue. The second year, I think I paid myself like 32 or 36 grand. Now that was my household income. My wife wasn't working. I had, uh, you know, like a one-year-old daughter. And um, by the third year, I went out and took out a loan. Uh, I hired someone for like 50 or 60 grand, and I didn't pay myself for six months, just to be able to keep the business going. So first, like an incredible amount of dedication of time and energy is needed. Right, working all day on sales and projects, working all night on delivery, editing, graphics, things like that. Um, super scrappy and scraping and bootstrapping to get by. 
and then never considering any of the dollars in the company as my dollars. Like, like even now, 12 years in, I'm very hesitant to pull money out of the company because it doesn't feel like my money. Some people think that I'm overly generous with compensation or salaries or investments and things like that because it's, it's the company's money. And, um, and people go like, no, like, Every dollar that you give to someone else is a dollar that doesn't put food on the table for your kids or their, their university or their, you know, or, or that break you need or that trip. So, mm. so that, that thinking though, which helped me grow and helped me scale, at a certain point, there's this tipping point where, where um, that, that comfortable, right? Like I, I, I struggled and struggled and struggled and then things got easier, year six, year seven, year eight, things are getting easier, and suddenly year nine and 10, I'm living, I'm living a pretty comfortable life. And so what it starts to become then is, um, is uh, the organic growth that we see, the, the promise to my team of don't worry, next year we're gonna get the bigger projects, next year we're gonna grow. You know, you say that year over year over year, eventually you become a liar, right? Like, like people are like, hey, I signed up to be part of this company that you said we're building. You know, I've been here for five years. When are we going to get there? And so, so, so the, the part of me not wanting to come into work for a few years wasn't because I still wasn't, it, I didn't even know that I wasn't happy. I didn't even know that I wasn't really challenged. I didn't even know that something could be even bigger because I was busy building a type of company that I thought I wanted. And last summer, uh, at the end of the summer, I spent like a week uh, well, two weeks where I actually got depressed for like the first time in my life, like like just really, really, really depressed. And I was wed I was ready to walk away from everything. Like it was literally what I told people was, you know, as a marketer, and this is how cynical and kind of sad I was at the time. I was like, as a marketer, you know, you're in video, you're in marketing. Our job is to make successful people slightly more successful. And I was like, that is a pretty hollow and empty thing, right? At the end of the day, people pay me to make successful people slightly more successful. Mm -hmm. And people would be like, wow, that's heavy. <laughs> and they're like, why, why are you doing this? And I was like, it's, I have to pay my mortgage. Um, I haven't found anything that can, that can if, you know, I would say like, if I, could, if I could find a way to replace my salary, I would leave, I would, I would leave everything instantly. And so, so this is just in September, right? And you know, I, I shared a few friends, I talked about some stuff um, with some people. And so what shifted was me realizing that, uh, you know, I gotta think bigger, that, uh, that even though I'm 12 years in, we're just getting started, that we're capable of really amazing things. And I'm, I suck at some stuff, so I gotta start doing it. Every few years, it happens to us all. It's you realizing that, you know, you wanna go one path and then you don't want to go that path and you're going another path. That will happen to you every few years. And so it's embracing that and understanding that and then, and then challenging yourself to, to rethink who you are and where you're going. And the reason it's exciting right now is because, you know, I'm, I'm six months into the process of like, everything feels fresh and feels new. So it's a lot of fun now. <laughs> it's, that's good. I mean, once you get into one of those ruts, it's, it's definitely not easy to get out of those. My, so, my, my advice to you would be like, if, if you find yourself getting there a few weeks in at any point, like I wish I, wish I knew a decade ago that, that, mm -hmm. these, that these cycles and these ruts that I would kind of just live my life through and kind of get lucky getting out of, mm -hmm. I think you can attack it more quickly. I think you could find yourself a week or two into one of these ruts or even, a, even the end of the day, you find yourself in a certain mm -hmm. mindset, you can switch that right away. I wish I knew that years ago. Like as soon as you start feeling that, you're like, okay, I'm gonna change this or something? Yeah, yeah, it's being, it's being aware, it's being, I mean, um, I, like I have, I have way more music in my life right now. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I, I get up much earlier because now I go to bed really tired. Like I've learned a few of these things where it's like um, I'm being much more direct with people and honest. So we'll see how we'll see if I get punched in the face. But um, yeah, it's it's just it's just um, mm -hmm. being a, a more aggressive version of myself, I guess. And people people thought I was pretty aggressive to begin with. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> the direction that you were headed before. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and now that you've got all this life injected into you and all this all this energy that's going on in the sky, you up so early in the sky, you tired and pooped by the end of the day. Well, what was what's the new direction now? So look, what are some of the heights that you're seeing? I got because I'm, I'm looking at your segment. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy. Like I'm reading some of the stories. I'm like, this project, why so <laughs> like this starter can I'm like, what the hell? Oh man. This is- okay, so so like I, I mentioned this in the video that I did with Evan years ago, but I gotta stress it again. If I looked at what we, who we are today, ten years ago, I would never have assumed we could turn into that. So don't okay. spend time looking at what others are doing and go like, how do I get there? I mean, it's big picture. You know you want to get there, but, but, the, but the steps are so massive, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, again, I'm 12 years into this. What we started with, you know, I used to charge $450 a day for, a, you know, for like a camera operator. And now our projects are like over a quarter million dollars. And so, I mean, not all of them. Very few of them, but but you know it's just it's just the the growth that happens. But it's like it's really incremental, little by little by little, step by step by step, project by project by project, and and it took a really long time. It took three four years to get the volume, and then you know now we knock out like a hundred, a hundred and forty, a hundred and sixty projects a year. Like mm-hmm. you know there are some really really small projects. I just invoiced a project that was like twelve hundred dollars, and then there are really big projects. So. It's that incremental growth. Um, what was the question? <laughs> you sort of think about one given direction, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, the direction, direction. So when I started yeah. in 2006, uh, internet video was not really a thing. You know, like YouTube wasn't owned by Google. Uh, Facebook was new, and MySpace was still huge. And so we were we were still putting we were still putting video on tape. Um, we were we were burning DVDs for people like so it's a different world then but but my goal at the time was I just wanted to create better work okay. it was a really simple purpose like like I just want to do good work for people and then it became and then it became like we want to do um, advertising and commercial work and then it became we want to be the best production company in the world and so we spent a bunch of years saying, you know, like I had this conversation with someone else. You know, we got a call from a client in Victoria, not a client, a prospect in Victoria, BC. And ultimately, we didn't win the project because someone in Vancouver, a lot closer than Toronto, of course, was just like much more affordable than us. Mm-hmm. And she said, listen, you guys are great and I really like you. And it just came down to like these two factors. And I'm going to keep your number because if we're ever in Ontario, we'll want to we'll want to work with you. And I said, listen, I appreciate that. But my goal is to be so good as a company, so good as a vendor, so amazing that you would literally ignore everyone in Victoria, everyone in Vancouver, everyone in Calgary, everyone. You would literally fly over and pay anything you need to pay to work with us. That's my goal. Why would someone in Texas work with us? Um, you know, mm-hmm. that, that was our goal. And now, yeah, that take, that, like it's a very abstract thing and, and, it, and it forces you to, to think bigger and to be better and all these things. But um, our more recent goal now is we've spent the last two or three years shifting from being very, very video focused to being uh, a full service digital agency. And we have always been very strategy based for campaigns or video. So it's increasing the strategy to to a a, a larger mandate. Um, It's to help clients with testing pricing and to um, do competitive analysis and um, develop brand strategies and go to market strategies. And so uh, what has gotten me more fired up than anything though is just thinking Thinking so big that it makes um, you embarrassed to share it with people. Having a goal, a plan that is so audacious that you're yeah. that you're nervous or embarrassed to share it with people because you think they're going to laugh at you. Mm-hmm. You know that sounds that sounds a lot like this guy right here. Ah, yes, Cardone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank well, thank you for for sharing that with me. Um, you know, don't worry. It's it's not something to be embarrassed about. I'm I'm curious. Are you comfortable with sharing where it is that you're specifically trying to go to, or someone that you look up to as like a model? Yeah. So I I mean, listen. The last time I I told someone my goal uh, in in February, they looked at me and they're like, "You're on drugs." 
Uh, yeah, and I was like, and I, I was like, no, I'm not on drugs. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so the the goal that I share publicly is um, I want to grow the company ten times larger. So we're okay. we're, we're roughly a two million dollar company, um, depending on the year. Uh, I want to be a twenty million dollar company, uh, and and for no other like like I'm not tied to the number, right? I don't, like whatever, fifteen million, twenty million, thirty million. I don't care. The difference is is that. My mindset, my operating structure, um, our teams, our communication structure, where we sell into being very kind of Toronto-centric, mm -hmm. to become a $20 million company or to be a $20 million company, we have to be a totally different type of company. And so we can't have a team of, you know, uh, of 14 people in-house and then this suite of, um, you know, we can't have the 20, 25 people we typically work with. We now need to have 140 staff. We can't have the six or seven really good clients that we work with time and again, we need to have 60 clients. <laughs> we can't just be in Toronto uh, or, or even locally, we now need to be able to work uh, across Canada, which we already do, but, but not like a lot, and then across America. So, so just by placing, you know, and Tony Robbins at his event at Unleash the Power is where this started, but uh, I went down there with my friend Evan and, and it was amazing, but it just, just, I don't care about the number. It was literally like, let's pick something large. Let's start to ask ourselves, because the questions we ask ourselves, our brains will answer. If we say, why am I a loser? Your brain will tell you why you're a loser. <laughs> if you yeah. say, why can't this work? Your brain will tell you why it can't work. So if you say, hey, uh, what needs to happen for us to be a $20 million a year company? Your brain, like, very, like within five minutes, I sketched out everything that had to happen. And now Crazy. I got now I got to figure out how to make it work, but but that's the fun part, man. That's the fun part. Crazy, man. <laughs> different questions lead to different answers. Different answers lead to different insights. Different insights lead to different actions, and different actions lead to different results, man. Congrats. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> He's just bumping the, the camera. <laughs> Talking to some of the people in my network, man, it's just like they're thinking way too small. Mm -hmm. So finally being able to connect with someone who's just as crazy, if not crazier than I am, right? It's like, wow, I'm not crazy. This is such a relief. You're, you're not crazy. And, and d d listen, you're, you're going to be the biggest thinker in your circle. And so you got to, you got to start, um, not replacing the circle, but you got to start putting yourself around people where, where again, you're embarrassed to, to, to talk to them about. I, I have a client and a friend who started as a welder and runs a $70 million company now. It's like, how do you start from, from talking your way onto the, to the, to the shop floor, pretending to be a welder when you didn't know how to weld, and then only like maybe 20 years later has this $70 million company, right? Like, like the dude is crushing it. And, mm -hmm. and so I can relate to him as the tradesperson, but I can relate to him as well as the person who's doing amazing things. And I don't, I don't have a fraction of what he has. So, <laughs> so just, just surround yourself with people who, who, who would look at you and go, well, what do you mean? I don't understand why you can't, like, why can't you build a $10 million company? Like, and you're like, oh, yeah, I guess why not? Just why not? Just why not? Okay, so what type of company do you want to build? I'm not, I'm not giving you advice. I'm asking you right now. What type of company do you want to build? Do you want to do you want to have a huge team? What type of work do you want to be doing? Do you want to be a freelancer? Do you want to do you want to work from a beach with passive income? Like, what type of company do you want to build? Um, so I want I want to have a, a team around me that pumps out meaningful work mm -hmm. and meaningful work being all types of creative, all types of advertising, and then manages a bunch of different businesses. Awesome. I want to be having a bunch of different online interfaces that are generating income on a continual basis, mm -hmm. and then having the house to create all the advertisements to get not only mine out, but the ones for businesses that are around me. Awesome. And in this company, so you're producing all of this meaningful yeah. uh, ad creative and whatnot. What is your role? Are you planning on selling? Are you planning on creating the content, creative director? Like what, what are you going to do now in this? Uh, selling. So I've, I've like continually, I just keep out selling my ability to produce. Mm. So my bottleneck right now is actually the creative. Mm -hmm. I'm, like sales have been like going crazy. That's awesome. Quite a month, and I can't, okay, can't so, even make this level of video yet. <laughs> okay, so charge more. <laughs> if sales are going crazy, move up your pricing. Um, yeah. The other thing, 
So, so you're actually in a really good place because a lot of people who are creatives and technical want to build this okay. thing, but they don't want to sell or they can't sell or they think they can't sell. They don't know how to talk to mm. people. They don't know how to position things. Uh, if you're selling like crazy and you can't produce things right now, that is a great challenge to have. So yeah. on your side, right size that, maybe charge more, uh, start to build out your team uh, and, and yeah. what have you. I would focus as much on creativity uh, media planning or strategy as possible. Either you are going to be a strategic company that produces creative work that goes to the market, you're going to be a creative agency and people just come to you for the creative, the bold, the ideas, uh, or you're going to be like a really strong media planner that then creates creative stuff that happens to have some strategy. There, there may be others as well, like you might just be the cheapest, you might just be the fastest, like there's different business models, but if it were me starting again, so I built my whole agency on strategy, right? I'm not, I'm, I'm a pretty creative person, but you ask my team and I'm not that creative, right? I'm like, I'm 100% about strategy. I'm hyper-focused on strategy. Mm -hmm. And so we naturally lean more strategic, but there are lots of really creative agencies that just blow me away with what they deliver and what they come up with that, that has some strategy to it. Uh, and then there's like the media, the distribution mm -hmm. side, right? They're like, I don't really care what it looks like. I don't really care what the strategy is. I'm gonna win because I'm gonna just focus on placements. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the system. And so this isn't gonna, this isn't, in three or four years, it might be different questions. But if I was starting right now, mm -hmm. I would focus on, we are the strategic agency. We are the creative agency. We are the media planning kind of agency. What I'm doing with Fanta right now is we're, we're trying to be all of those things, so, and more. But um, if I were starting, I would pick one. I would, I would be that type of company, and then I would find people who really appreciate that. Mm. Well, well, Mark, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I would love to ask you more questions and sit here and pick your brain for the whole day, but I understand that's a big consulting invoice that you're going to end up sending me at the end. Not, not at all. So. We, keep me posted with how things go, and if you have any more questions, just shoot me an email, man. Sounds good. Okay. I wish you nothing but the best, okay? Okay, cheers. Bye. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.